Hey everyone, it's Nadia from Leo Dia Designs and I'm back with another tutorial. Today we are doing another water slide tutorial because I had a couple requests in my comments from some followers on a couple things. So I want to test out what was mentioned in the mentioned in the comments by a few people actually. So let's test those out. So what we're going to be doing is I have a new image and this is a really cute little turtle. Check him out. And again, I purchased this image off of Shutterstock. I know I had a few people asking where I buy my images, my images from. So Shutterstock, I'll leave a link in the description under the video. So I printed those out and I've already made two resin coasters and I use the same mold I used last time, which is kind of like a diamond edge uh, coaster. But what I did is I wanted kind of a watery effect. So I poured clear resin, but it had a little touch of resin dye in it from Lutz Resin. So I, again, that's uh, the links where all these products are in my, um, are in the description below the video. So check that out. So I put a little touch of resin dye, just like a blue color, just to kind of tint it. And cause it's a transparent color, but then I had a little bit of glitter, just kind of iridescent glitter. I don't know how much it's showing on camera there, but a little bit of iridescent glitter. And then these cool little like waves in here are actually made by, um, I put in a tiny bit in the mixture of um, moonstone powder and this is blue this is from db resin products uh, unfortunately i think he's closed his shop now online but i do know that there are other type of like ghost pow mica powders um, and i don't know if they're using the same name of moonstone but it has this kind of a you know it just has a reflection to it. Like it's mostly like a white mica powder. Actually, let's look at it from the top. It's mostly a white mica powder, but it has like, it has a little bit, I think it's called interference. I can't remember, but it's like a, I know some of the other companies call it a ghost powder. So similar like that, but I just use a little bit of this. And like I said, it tints a bit blue. And then I didn't actually do anything special with it after I put it in the resin. It just created this pattern itself. So it's pretty neat. It was, I think it's going to work really well for my ocean theme. So I have that. And um, the two things that we're going to be trying today is um, the first one is I was told. So last time, if you saw my previous video, I cut out the uh, the image and I you know put it in water. Uh, face up like this and then I put the image onto the coaster and you know held the image on the top and then slid the water paper the, the white backer paper out from under the uh, the image and then that's how it stuck onto the coaster because that was what the instructions and again this is the water slide paper that I'm using and that's what the instructions actually said to do so I was following the instructions on this but some more experienced people with water slide paper did mention that we can actually treat this paper like tattoo paper or tattoos, I guess, temporary tattoos, where we actually can, you know, put it upside, you know, put it upside down onto the coaster and wet the back and then slide the basically just peel or slide off the backer instead of having to like try to hold the image in place and slide. So, um, so we're going to try that as well today. So that's one thing we're going to try. And then the other request I had is I had someone asking for, I don't know if it was specific to the water slide paper, but I think it was it, but it was on the video. So I'm just going to, the comment was on the video. So I'm just going to do a water slide thing with that is they wanted kind of an ocean theme. So what I want to do is I'm going to be uh, putting our turtles onto our coasters. And then I, when I top coat it, I want to add um, like ocean waves, like white lacy ocean waves, hopefully, <laughs> hopefully lacy, beautiful white ocean waves, kind of, you know, that effect. So we'll go through that as well, but that's the look I'm kind of going for. And that's why I wanted the, the coasters to kind of have a blue tint. So when we put our white waves on top, they're going to show through. So that is the plan. So to get started, with that, um, I like I said, I have my images. I've already cut out two just to save us some time. So here we go. We have our two images here, and 
I want to put them something like this. This one of these is going to be backwards. I didn't print one backwards. Just I know. So what they're basically been telling me that if you want to do the tattoo trick where you're actually going to flip it like this, if you want your image to actually, you know, be this way, obviously when you print it, you have to flip it the opposite way. I wasn't too worried about that. I'm okay to have these guys looking at each other. That's totally fine. So, um, but I did cut them out and I did, I cut this one out, not really for testing purposes, just, I don't know, just to do it. I cut this one out with scissors and I cut this out with my X-Acto knife. There's really no difference in how you cut them for that. I just, I just did it. I don't know why just for fun. So anyway, so that's the reason why there's a bit of a difference in how these look. Uh, there's less of an outline on here because I find them more accurate with my X-Acto knife um, than with scissors. With scissors, I tend to leave more of a white area. So anyway, it's going to be clear. I don't think it's going to make a big difference. So, so there we go. All right, so let me get my water and then we will go to the next step of actually getting these attached to our coasters. Okay, so for coaster number one, we're going to do, we're going to put the water slide paper on the same way I did in my last video. Um, just because, you know, we have, I'll just for anybody new who's seeing this for the first time, um, I'll show you the way that the package says to do it. And then on the next one, we'll do the reverse. So let's do that first. So I, like I said, I have it cut out. I have a bit of water in my bowl here. And we're just going to go ahead and put that in. And just like last time, um, the paper wants to curl up. So we're just going to try to settle it down into the bowl or into the water, I should say. And we want to make sure everything is getting soaked with water. I make my water really shallow for this. I mean, you can make it deeper and it'll probably be easier. <laughs> but... Um, yeah, we're just gonna, and I, for this one too, um, the process, if you didn't watch the previous video is I use an inkjet printer, my home printer. And, um, if you add a little bit more, just cause it doesn't want to stick up. So, um, I did use my inkjet printer and if you're going to use inkjet, obviously inkjet is not waterproof. So, um, what I did is I took my spray, which I left over here. All right. So I just used my Dupli Duplicolor Acrylic Lacquer Clear Coat. So this is just a protective color and it's an aerosol so you just, just spray it. I did spray this a little extra more than I did last time. Last time I did two coats. This time I did about four just because I did see that I was getting a little bit of loss of color last time. So as you can see, it's already kind of peeling up. I'm going to move this out of the way. Um, so we're going to put that down and I want him to be kind of on an angle like so. And this one, as you can see, it's already sliding quite a bit. So we're just going to hold the image in place and slide him off like so. And then I'm just going to try to, they say to use wet fingers and Kind of smoosh out all that, you know, squeegee out all that extra water. So I'm going to try to do that. And I'm going to take a little bit of paper towel and try to wipe any excess off as well. So, and uh, I did last time. I used my heat gun and I kind of heated it up a bit to get that to quickly, you know, dry. I dried it for about five, like, like really light air, like not, don't, you know, hit it hard with the heat gun. Like just kind of, I was kind of letting air, warm air waft over it. Um, and it did dry out, um, you know, at least the surface, and then I had to let the rest of it dry because the paper, the bottom, the instruction says to leave for about three or four hours. So I had done that, and then after I did that, it only needed about an hour to actually dry after that point. So, so here we go. We have our little turtle guy, and uh, I mean, it obviously it's not as bright uh, because it doesn't have the white background as we did on our last one, but. I think it's still gonna look pretty nice. 
So, so that's one. And like I said, there's still water under it. So if you want to shift it around, now is the time to do that before it dries. So we're going to do that. I want him to kind of look like, I'm hoping the water is going to be like down here and it's going to look like he's kind of like jumping <laughs> under the water a bit. I mean, it's probably not going to be exactly like that, but I want to kind of give that feeling. So like so. Okay, so that's one. And for this one, let's get rid of that. For this one, we're going to treat it as a tattoo. So the way that the tattoos normally work is you just have to kind of flip it over like this um, and then just use, you know, a wet, a wet paper towel or something on the back to kind of soak it. But, so I'm going to do that. So let's do put them like so. I'm going to grab water right out of my bowl here. And we're going to see if we can soak it right onto, I might need a bigger paper towel. <laughs> All right, hold on, I'm getting the other one. Um, okay, so we're gonna get more and we'll wet this side as well. And then we're gonna try to hold down the entire thing. Now, this probably will take about a minute so I will time lapse or I'll basically I'll cut and come back. So you guys will know when a minute is up. I'll be right back. Okay. So it's been probably about 30 or I don't know, maybe about 45 seconds, not quite a minute. Um, but you can see all I'm doing here is I'm just kind of like this, this paper towel is very saturated with water. So I'm just kind of squeezing it just to kind of keep the water on it here. I don't know if I need to do that, but I always find that, uh, you know, when you have the temporary tattoos for kids and when you put them on the skin and you're always like super worried that you're going to, you know, try to peel it off too early and then half of the image still comes off and the kid gets super disappointed. <laughs> That's what goes through my head with this whole temporary tattoo thing. So I want to make sure it's like really on there because I don't want to disappoint anyone. All right. So anyway, so let's take that off and see. And I think, ooh, oh, look at that, slid right off. There we go. So that does work for sure. And I mean, kind of easier actually. So all of you water slide professionals out there, thank you very much. And uh, we're going to do the same thing and just kind of, I mean, honestly, they're both really easy to do. I don't, the first day, the first time the sorry, the other video was the first time I've actually ever tried it. So I don't have any, I didn't have any experience, but, um, it was, you know, once you get the hang of it, it's not too bad, but actually I did find this is actually a little bit easier, even just for like flattening, keeping the image flat and every, sorry, it's the lights glaring off of it. Um, keeping the, being able to keep the image flat and, uh, not having to worry about that part of it. So now I do have a bubble in there. Let's try to get rid of that. So, um, yeah, so I, you know, treating it as a temporary tattoo actually worked really well. I mean, is maybe this is the, is it the exact same paper, you know, that they make temporary tattoos on? You know what? That makes a lot of sense <laughs> now that I'm thinking about it. So anyway, so there you go. So, and, you know, with the white behind it, you can kind of see it a little bit better, like so. Cute. So yeah, so there we go. So we have our two guys now. Let me put another paper here, so we can look at them both. So there we go. We have both of our turtles ready to go. So now we have to leave this for a couple hours. I'm not gonna worry about heating these ones. Um, it's kind of around dinner time here, so I'm going to be away from my studio for a couple hours anyway. So I'm not going to try to rush and heat these and try to rush dry them. So, um, yeah, so we'll leave them and we'll be back. When I'm, when I come back, what I will do is it'll probably be, I'll probably go straight into a time lapse. But what I will do before that is I'm going to put liquid latex on the back of each of these because that's going to help prevent the drips because since I don't have it in the mold, I'm going to top coat it with a clear 
uh, resin and then I'm going to do the um, the waves on top. So uh, in order to do that and prevent the drips on the bottom, I'm going to do my liquid latex uh, protector on the bottom. Uh, you could use tape or I think, you know, I've tried school glue. It works too. I still prefer the liquid latex, but, um, and for those of you who are wondering which one I use, this is the one that I normally use here. I have used another kind. It's actually here as well, but it's almost done. When I couldn't, this one sometimes takes a bit of, takes a little while for me to receive it in the mail. So like if I order it, cause I'm not, I'm ordering it from, I don't know where actually, but um, I just kind of look for it online and then I have it sent to me. But uh, this is another one I just ordered off Amazon. And so it's a smaller bottle and I find that this is a much better kind of, um, you know, amount for the dollars that you're spending you're getting a good amount because i think i paid the same price for each of these and you can see from the bottle size you're getting a lot less in this one but i was desperate one day so i ordered this one but this is definitely the one that i prefer to get so i use this just use a brush and uh you just kind of lay it on pretty thick around the edges it goes on white and dries clear and once it's clear then you know you're good to go to uh, pour your resin on top and once it's done you can uh, once everything you know within whatever time your resin cures mine's eight hours after eight hours i can go in and just peel the liquid latex latex right off and it's super easy so so i will be doing that once these are dry and then after that i'll be pouring clear resin on top and then doing the wave effect on top and uh, when i come back from that time lapse i'll you know, hopefully everything's successful <laughs> and then i can explain how I did the waves for those of you who are looking for that information and then we should be pretty much done. Oh, I'm back <laughs> for one quick thing. Um, I just noticed as I'm watching these, I mean, it's only been like a couple minutes since I stopped recording, but um, I am noticing something and I don't know if it's because of the scissors or if it's because I flipped it upside down, but I'm noticing on this one that the edges, I don't know if you guys can see it, you can kind of see, you know, white around the edges, like it's not actually completely sticking down, but I can't press it down any more than it already is. But we're kind of seeing a white edge. I mean, with the resin, it's likely to disappear um, just because resin tends to do that. But um, it looks like it's kind of sticking up a bit and it's a little bit noticeable right now in comparison to this one where you're not seeing the edges. Now this is the one that I um, that I use my X-Acto knife to cut and I put it on the way that the instruction said. So the printed side is actually still facing upwards and this is the one where I flipped it like a tattoo so it was facing, the image is facing downwards uh, and I also, now I should have just cut them both the same. <laughs> so then I wouldn't, I would know if it was actually because I flipped the paper. But again, so those of you who are more familiar with this, can you tell me if, you know, cutting with scissors? I mean, I cut with scissors. No, actually, no, I cut with my blade last time. So I had the same effect as this one. But this is the first time I cut with scissors and I'm seeing that. So I don't know if it's because of the scissors or if it's because I flipped it upside down. So for those of you who have experience with this, let me know. Is it, which do you think it is? Is it the scissors or is it the fact that it's upside down? I don't know but anyway i i wouldn't have thought it would have been the scissors but now i'm i definitely i don't know <laughs> so let me know what you think and uh, like i said we'll be going into a time lapse and we'll have more discussions afterwards
Okay, so um, before we go into what was happening in the time lapse, I just want to quickly mention that so I did end up peeling um, that one turtle off the one that was flipped backwards because it was just seems like it was just lifting and I did take it off and I did try to re-soak it in water and then reapply it and when I did that I was just damaging it so you can see that there's bits of damage here and around the mouth and stuff and it just wasn't working I mean I think it probably would have it's just for whatever reason maybe it had been sitting a bit too long so now it, it was a bit more delicate so anyway so I ended up cutting a new piece and I did cut it with scissors because I did want to just test if it was the scissors that were the problem so I did cut it with scissors and I did uh now I can't remember which one's which but I did end up placing it um you know with the the original way of sliding the paper under that you know even with the scissors I didn't have any issues with it sitting flat so I think it was the fact that we were flipping it upside down maybe it just doesn't at least the paper I have just doesn't adhere as well um, with that. So I think that may have been the issue. But anyway, so I ended up just having, so both of these were now placed on in the same, using the same technique of the original video that I did. So if, you know, if those of you who have had success with it, maybe, you know, the paper, if you're using something a little bit different, maybe that one just works better when it's flipped. Um, just for whatever reason, the one I have isn't. So Anyway, um, and now if we go into the time lapse, you'll see that I um, did get, uh, at least on this one, I got some really nice lacing on this one, or cells as some people call it. So I did get some really nice lacing on it. I kind of messed up a bit on the angle of the waves. I wanted it to actually come up higher on this side so that his face was a bit more visible, but I still think it looks pretty cool. And like the blue color, it's a really light blue, so we're not going to see it much on white. When you have it on um, the darker background, um, you can see that, you know, the blue is more apparent, but then the turtle's less apparent. So it's just, it's an interesting um, kind of result here. So anyway, so we have that. So that was that one. The second one that I did, so if you watch the time lapse carefully, you'll notice that I actually got nice cells on both of these on the first try. But then this is what I generally end up doing. And it <laughs> and I, I don't do a lot of ocean stuff just because it's not really my style to want to do a lot of that. I mean, I do it if I need to or if a customer asks me to, but it's not really something, it's not a go-to technique for me. It's not something I do a lot. So um, what always ends up happening with my waves or the the cells or the the lacing is that I work it too much. So the way that happens is is that basically when you're using oh and I will show you the white um, that I was using because I know a lot of you want to know that as well. So um, the way that lacing works best, at least in my experience, is that you put your clear down and then you're going to take your pigmented white. And you're going to, you know, lay a line down and, you know, one or two lines or whatever. And then you take your heat gun on like a low heat. So my heat gun has two settings. I put it on the lowest setting and then you slowly push um, on an angle, like from this angle, you push the, the white pigment into the clear resin, like upwards or whichever direction you want. And then once you've kind of spread it, you need to leave it. <laughs> and that's where I always go wrong because generally the cells start to appear not immediately, but it takes like a minute or so. And then it starts to show the cells because that's when the resin's doing its thing and reacting and moving. Um, but for me, I always end up wanting to, you know, add more or I don't think it's enough or I want to add more white lines and the white lines are too harsh. Like there's always something that I do to kind of mess it up. But this one, I kind of stopped myself and it does, it actually looks really nice. This one, um, if you can see it, it basically, we got some cells here because originally when I first laid it down, I didn't think, that, I thought, I think I put it too low or something and I want to go higher. So I did that. And then um, the next time, I, the second time I did it, I think I felt like there should have been more white. So then I tried to add another one. And then, so I ended up keeping this line, but I was adding more white below it. And as you can see, once you've kind of gone to that first step of trying to get the lacing, the more and more heat or the more and more you fiddle with it, you're just going to mess it up. So I ended up just kind of, you know, 
making lines in it. So I mean, I got a bit of lacing up here, which is what I want. And down here, I just kind of played with it to try to get some lines. Something that looked half decent. I, I was going, I was thinking of scraping it and starting over, but I didn't really want to do that. So we just did this. I still think this looks pretty cool, but this was the original look that I was actually, uh, you know, thinking of or intending to do um, on the piece. So, so this is a better representation of what I was thinking. And then this is just kind of, you know, another way of kind of dealing with it if for some reason, you know, it doesn't work out perfectly. But I still think both of them look pretty neat. And uh, this one here still has the liquid latex on the bottom because I want to show you that as well. So, so as you can see, I don't know if you can see, but there's liquid latex here, it's clear. And then you can see how the drips just kind of formed under it. So the resin, I poured it over the edge and now the drips just kind of formed along the bottom. And now it's literally just a matter of doing this. You don't need any tools, you don't need any extra heat. It's all just, and this has actually been sitting, it's been about, I want to say close to 24 hours now because I didn't get a chance this morning to actually uh, take this off. So, and even in the thicker areas, um, it's just, it peels off pretty easily. So just a matter of pulling it and we'll go from the other side here and it comes off clean. So I don't, I don't, um, I know some people have had some concerns and even I've noticed on wood, like natural wood, that there's sometimes um, the liquid latex seems to take off or it just seems to discolor it slightly. Um, with wood, you can kind of get away with it because you just oil it and everything goes back to normal. But in that case, I would say I only really use liquid latex on the bottom of my pieces now. I don't really use them on the top of my pieces. So I don't want to ruin the aesthetic on the top if, um, if if you're finding liquid latex is causing you that issue. So I really only use them on the bottom. And for clear, it doesn't seem to be any type of issue at all. So, so there we go. Oh, and also on the top, I don't know if you, if you see any little bubbles in there, I wasn't really, <laughs> because it's an ocean piece, I wasn't really too concerned about if there was any tiny bubbles. You can see like there's some in there. I really wasn't really making any type of attempt to get rid of them just because I thought the bubbles could be kind of neat in here. So anyway, so that is our coasters. And so like I said, what we did today is we basically just, uh, we wanted to test reversing the water slide paper. And I wanted to do a bit of an ocean theme, adding a layer of um, lacing uh, ocean waves over top. Let me grab the white. I'll be right back. Okay, so here's the white. This is a pigment paste, and this is Lorez Expressions. This is Angel White. Sorry, my <laughs> you can see how much I, it gets used because I have all of my <laughs> fingerprints on here from working with different colors. But Angel White, and this is a poxy pigment paste, but from Lorez Expressions, and I'll put a link below where you can find this. Um, I there's a few different distributors, but I have a couple, so I will um, actually here you go. This is where I got this one here. Um, I know Laura's Art Corner also, I believe, sells Lorez uh, pigment paste. So anyway, so that's where uh, you can get that. And you just put a little tiny bit of that in a little bit of resin that's separate. So you want to mix your res, mix like in a small cup, mix a bit of the resin or however much you think you're going to need for the waves and um, add a little, you know, add enough of the, the pigment paste to kind of make it white. And that's what you use. So you'll have your clear, and then you'll take that separate mixture of white pigment paste and resin, and then that's what you use to kind of lay down those white lines and then use your heat gun to um, to heat it. Now, I don't, I mean, you guys can correct me if I'm wrong. I don't believe you can get the same lacing effect with a torch. Um, you'll, you know, you need to push the, um, the pigment. So I believe you need to have a heat gun for that and not a hair dryer, like an actual heat gun. So um, I do have a listing somewhere down in the description as well for the heat gun that I'm currently using. So if you're interested in that, you can find that in there too. But any heat gun that's meant for this type of use should be fine. So anyway, so that is that. I hope you guys enjoyed this video and uh, I hope that was helpful for those of you who were asking questions or who wanted me to test out, um, you know, the 
the tattoo method, I guess we can call it. Um, and then also kind of giving an ocean feel. I really like how these turned out actually with the, the pale blue background, the wateriness, the, <laughs> the wateriness, the water and the, uh, the ocean kind of theme. So I hope you guys like it. And so I'm going to get going. And before I go, I do want to thank all of you who are, uh, supporting the channel by liking and subscribing and sharing. And also those who are, um, helping to support uh, my art by whether you're purchasing on my website or you're sending me a super chat or a super like or a PayPal donation or uh, a coffee. I mean, there's so many different ways and I'm so grateful for all of you for your support. And especially, you know, like I said, there's no obligation to do any of those things. Um, the most I ask that you do is that you like and subscribe and share because it does help the channel to kind of spread it so more people kind of know about me and my channel and the techniques that I'm trying to teach and uh, you know just spreading the, the the love for my art so I appreciate all of you who do that and especially those who you know are here every week and they're always commenting and they're always liking and you know they also follow me on other you know the other socials and things like that I appreciate all of you guys so much so Anyways, I'm going to get going. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next one. Take care. Bye.